We're debuting our R2 series excavators, our E42 and our E50 is what we have here. Um, and I'm excited to walk through some nice new features that we have on these machines. So first of all, we're calling them R2 series, or they are the R2 series excavators. Uh, we're taking, the, or we're carrying forward the R1 features that we launched on our three to four ton, our E32 and E35 excavators a couple years ago. So that would be the the new larger cab with improved visibility, more space. Uh, that was an R1 series feature. The dual flange rollers, which give you, which give you better. Uh, vibration or lower vibration in the cab, a smoother ride, as well as improved over the side lift capacity, and then just overall um, fit and finish of our covers and exterior. Those were the R1 series features that we really promoted on our on our three to four ton size excavators. Uh, we're carrying those forward to our R2 series, and we're adding a bunch of new things that I'll go through right now uh, for this machine that we have on here. So first of all, uh, we have an integrated lift eye uh, on our machines. This used to be an option or a field installed kit. Uh, this is very important for a lot of contractors. They go to a, a, a job site and uh, it is required by a lot of inspectors for a lot, a lot of regulations to have this. So instead of going to a job site and, and not having it and potentially being shut down, this just gives you that uptime because you have it standard with your machine. Uh, going forward on the arm, another nice improvement that we have with this is we relocated the auxiliary quick couplers for your hydraulic attachments to the arm. They were previously up on the boom. What this allows you to do is just, it's a more ergonomic uh, position for attaching your hydraulic hoses. Uh, it's a lot easier to, to connect them in this position versus up there. You have to raise the, or extend the arm, lower the boom, and even then it's still very difficult to, or not very difficult, it can be more difficult to access them. Um, so that's the one advantage of this is, is just easier access, but also this position is the same location from your attachment pin uh, to the coupler, whether you have a short arm or long arm. So that allows you to use the same hoses, uh, whether you have a long arm or short arm. So if you have a, a large fleet with a mix of different machines, uh, this will be much nicer because you can easily move attachments back and forth. Uh, with this also, we're introducing our diverter valve. This will be included with any clamp that you order from the factory. So what the diverter valve is, uh, is basically you plumb your hydraulic clamp to your auxiliary circuit. So you can run either your clamp or your hydraulic attachments on the same circuit. Previously, uh, before the diverter valve, you'd have to disconnect your clamp hoses, tie them up, and then connect your, your attachment, hydraulic attachment hoses if you wanted to switch to a breaker or a plate compactor. With the diverter valve, you leave your hoses for your hydraulic clamp permanently connected to this, um, and then you simply just with a wrench switch the flow from either your attachment so it's much easier to operate um, and again you don't have those hoses um, that you have to deal with with your clamp. Uh, the benefit of this design too is um, the flow goes directly to the couplers. Um, if you want to use your clamp you simply turn on the flow and it'll go so there is no additional restrictions with this clamp or with this diverter valve uh, which uh, some designs you do actually have a true diverter valve which will generate heat you'll lose some some performance with your hoses so uh, one of the small nice features with with the diverter valve. Uh, in addition to that, you can see this machine has depth check. Uh, depth check we debuted many years ago, um, so that's nothing new. But what we did do is we pre-drilled the holes. It's kind of hard to see because this has depth check in it. Um, but for all the sensors, the locations are already mounted, so you can easily um, install the depth check system. If you want to move it to another machine, you can unbolt it, put it on, uh, calibrate it, and you're ready to go. So it's a lot easier if, again, if you have multiple machines and you only want to run one depth check system, you can, uh, again, move that about. And then what depth check really is, it's a 2D um, guidance system that allows you to set your grade, and then it, it it's integrated into our machine display, so it will tell you if you want to dig at a depth of two feet, it will show you when you're at two feet, um, and you can, can keep that, or you can actually set a slope if you're using a laser, uh, so you don't have to get out of the machine and mark it with a stick or have another guy on your job site to, to be marking the, the depth. So it really allows you a much more efficient system than, again, getting in and out or having a second guy on the job site. So uh, moving on, uh, really moving to the cab,
Uh, I talked about this is a, a very similar cab to what we have on our R1 series excavators already. Uh, the couple of nice improvements that we've made for R2 series is the display. This has a standard 5 inch LCD display, uh, so it does have password protection in it. Uh, no key or everything we offer today on the R2 series will be keyless uh, with password or passcode protection. So that will give you that enhanced level of security uh, because, um, again, you can lock the machine. We also changed our, our joysticks. We added new joysticks to the machine. They'll give you lower lever efforts, so less fatigue uh, if you're in the machine all day. And we also paired that with a new hydraulic control valve for better finite control and the overall um, ability to just um, position your work group. It gives you better control and again, that lower lever efforts. And then the last thing that we'll talk about on this machine is the Bobcat engine version too. So uh, we made some really nice improvements with that for uptime quality, uh, but really the things that really will impact the customers are the oil change interval is moving to 750 hours. So previously it was at 500, so it's an extra 250, and we eliminated the need to do an oil change at 50 hours. So for the customers, they buy the machine on the lot, they don't have to change the oil till they get to 750 hours or every year, whatever actually comes first. So that's a really nice improvement. We also made improvements to the fuel filter life um, and extended that. So with the new engine, a lot less serviceability that you have to do over the life of the machine. So and that's what we have on the 42. Just moving over to the 50 real quick, I want to talk about the the optional seven inch display that we have on our machine here. So it is the Bobcat touch display. Uh, you can see it in the, the screen there. That is a touch screen. Uh, it is a very hard uh, screen. It's uh, what we call 9H hardness, which generally doesn't mean a lot to a lot of customers, uh, but it is very durable. Diamond is 10, steel is somewhere in between six and seven. So it's harder than steel. It's very close to diamond. So we had a lot of concerns about, and especially in the construction industry, about scratches and the durability of that. Um, it is chemically hardened, so you really don't have to worry about scratching that machine and having to replace it over um, you know a few years. It is also weather resistant. You can get this in our canopy um, versions as well. Um, and then the features that come with this display uh, is it, it's really loaded. It's similar to what you get on your automotive side. So it's got a uh, touch screen like I mentioned but it also has Bluetooth calling so you can pair your phone with a microphone and it does have active sound cancellation in it too or noise cancellation. So you can call um, with the machine running and really it's quite clear for the, the person on the other end of the phone to hear. So it, it works very well. Uh, you also can connect your phone via Bluetooth, like I mentioned, and stream music from uh, any of the music apps uh, on your phone or you know podcasts, whatever you want to listen to. So uh, it gives you that functionality as, as well. And then we just enhanced our service codes. So on our previous deluxe display version, it would give you a code and a brief description. We've taken that a little bit further and it gives you a, a much more detailed description. And there's also a feature in there for our dealers to set up if they want. Uh, if you have a phone paired, if you get an a error code or a service code, it will say contact the dealer if it's set up and you can hit call the dealer and it can actually call the dealer right from the machine if you wanted to ask them a question. So uh, a lot of nice features. I'm not going to get into to them all because like I said, there is a lot that, that is here. So it's something that we're very excited for uh, with with the R2 series machines. When you look at the compact excavator business, some of the trends that we see in the next year to five, ten years is going to be focused really on operator on the operator and really performance of the machine and uptime. So on the R2 series, what we're really focusing on is is operator comfort. Like I said, the bigger, uh, more visible cab entry exit is more open. The displays, um, the diverter valve, making everything easier for for the customer and the operator to use the machine and to the engine where we're talking increased uptime and, and service intervals so you're not having to bring the the machine in as as often so it's all about that productivity and comfort with our two series looking a, a little bit further ahead i think you're going to start seeing you know we have our depth check system which is really a 2d system you're going to start seeing more i, I believe um, integrated operator um, 
guidance systems into this machine that may be somewhat autonomous or, or something along that line where you take some of the operator out of the focus or make it easier for an operator or an inexperienced or lesser experienced operator to operate this equipment. Because what we're seeing from a lot of our customers in the job site is it's just harder and harder to, for business owners to find good operators for our equipment. And that's really what they want when they get a good operator. They want to make sure they're happy and comfortable. So that's why you see a lot of these operator specific features. Um, but the, taking the next step forward again is the lesser experienced operators. We want them to be able to operate our equipment just as well as, as some of the someone that's got you know many years on our machines. So that's where I think you'll see some of these you know features going in the next you know it might be could be a couple of years, five, ten years. I think you're going to just continue to see an ev evolution of of again guidance systems and making it easier for for uh, customers and operators.